Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a monochrome effect inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. So the idea here is that we want to change all of the vivid colors in this video clip to basically white plus a single other color. Now, that can be a simple black and white, but we can also color shift the shadows. Basically everything you see here that's not white can be considered a shadow of sorts into any color that we choose. So the best place to do this simple color grading effect is to go over to, of course, the color tab. So this is the fifth one over from the left at the bottom. So click on the little color wheel here and that will pull us to the color tab. So the first thing that we're going to need to do here is to basically strip out all of the color and basically be left with just shadows and whiteness. So we can do that very easily by controlling the saturation of this single node. So if you look at the bottom of the color window, there's a setting here called sat that stands for saturation or basically how vivid you want your colors to be. So if we drop this all the way to zero, it's going to be black and white. So if you're looking for a pure black and white effect, you can actually just stop there and you'd be good. But if we want to color shift these shadows over to a different color, then we're going to need to add in an extra corrector node. So as you can see in this node section in the top right, DaVinci Resolve is essentially going to enter this coloring section with an input, which is basically what you have on all the other tabs leading into this stage. And then it feeds into this first corrector node where we change the saturation. So now we want to add a second one so that we can add the color back in. So right click and go to add node and then corrector. So after stripping all of the colors out and basically being left with just black and white, we want to connect that into the second node here. So you have to left click and drag the line from the green square into the green triangle of the second node. So now on the right side over here, you'll also see a green circle. This is your output for the color section. We're going to want to have the second node become our final output. So left click on the line right to the left of the green circle over here, and that'll disconnect the output between node one and the final output. Now we want to connect the green square from node two to that final output. So now we have a sequence here going from the input to node one to node two, and then our final output. So with node two, we're going to want to add the color back in. So in the bottom left hand section here where it says color wheels, you're gonna to wanna to change from primary wheels, the default over to log. So rather than changing the lift, the gamma and the gain, for these purposes in log, controlling the shadow color directly is probably going to give you a better effect because we want to essentially make sure that we're not touching the white slash kind of gray background at all because we're going for monochrome. So it should be white plus one other color in this case, and we can achieve that by controlling the shadow color while basically leaving the highlight and the midtone alone. So at this point, you just need to shift the shadow color over to the color that you want in your clip. So if you want it to be monochrome green, shift your shadow color over towards green. And you're going to see that the areas of the shadows that aren't completely pitch black by default are going to acquire a lot of that green color. So now we can just go ahead, hit play, make sure that everything looks the way we want. While it's playing even, we can change the color to something else. So you might decide instead of green, maybe you want something like a blue. Now, if it doesn't look quite right still, then you can play around with the LR and HR settings at the bottom, basically controlling the low and high range for what should be considered a shadow and what should be considered a highlight. So if you want more of the clip to be falling into that shadows and absorbing the color, then you can adjust these ranges until it gives you more or less the look you're going for. If you ever want to preview it a little bit bigger, you can hit this maximize button and then go from 25% in the top left hand corner to fitting the screen should make it a little bit easier to see exactly what's going on and then hit play and go back through your clip one more time. And then you can just keep adjusting the settings as needed. If you want more or less color in general, then you can also play around with the saturation for the second node. So if you increase the saturation, it's going to look very much like the color you had in mind. And then if we lower the saturation back down again, it's going to look closer to that black and white with just a tint of the color that you chose. But you can probably leave that as the default 50 in a lot of cases. So that's basically in a nutshell how you can achieve a monochrome color effect inside of DaVinci Resolve. So let's go ahead and show a before and after real quick by passing the color effects. We can see that the original clip had all kinds of colors going on. Still very cool. But if we turn that into our monochrome, even though it had a lot of vivid colors before, everything now is shifted towards 
blues and different shades between a pure white and that blue color, which can also look really cool. And of course, it doesn't have to be blue. It can really be any color following the same steps. So hopefully you guys got something out of this quick DaVinci Resolve tutorial. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys in my future video content.